Today, me and Tuck are going to show you how to make your own soil. This will take your harvests to the next level. Let's go! Let's start by adding our first component, cocoa core. You can use either cocoa core or peat moss, but I highly suggest using cocoa core. I like it better for a number of reasons. One is that it has a neutral pH, while your peat moss has an acidic pH. It's way more acidic. Another thing is your cocoa core is both good at retaining moisture and also draining. While your peat moss is good at retaining moisture, but it can hold on to a little too much moisture sometimes. Your cocoa core also, when it's super dry, is great at taking in the moisture. So if it's completely dried out, it easily just takes the moisture right in. But your peat moss, if it gets completely dried out, it can go kind of hydrophobic and it's hard to actually get wet again. The cocoa core, I usually get them in blocks. You can order it online. A lot of the stuff I'm gonna share with you, you can order online. And a lot of the stuff I have on my website. So let's get our cocoa core down and then start getting our soil going. Next up, let's grab some compost. So there's a number of different kinds of compost. Right here we have a mushroom compost. This I get delivered in a large quantity. I just get it dumped on my driveway. So it makes it a lot cheaper. If you don't have the ability to do that, you could get some bagged compost. This is the one at Lowe's Black Cow that I found to be the best out of the few that they have a choice of. So if you can't get a big quantity delivered, which is a lot cheaper, you could go with something like the Black Cow. There's also earthworm castings. I wouldn't do all earthworm castings though. I'm gonna add this in a little bit later. So mushroom compost is our next component. We're gonna dump that one in. Next up, let's add in some vermiculite. So vermiculite is really good at retaining moisture as opposed to perlite. Per perlite's better for drainage. So if we're gonna do a more of a potty mix, we would add some perlite. If we're gonna do more of like a raised bed mix, then we would add vermiculite. I like adding both of them though. Let's start out with some vermiculite add some perlite. This right here is going to be your basic mix. I got this idea from the Square Foot Gardening book. This is Mel's mix where it's one third compost, one third peat moss, and then one third vermiculite. I switch up the ratio and things just a little bit. This would be your most basic overarching mix, but I do things a little differently. Over the years, I've kind of just switched my ingredients around and I found something that worked perfect for both in raised beds and also for in a pot. What I like to do is Switch the ratios a little bit. So I'll do a total of three buckets of, of cocoa core. So that was one, this is my second bucket of cocoa core. And then we'll do one more bucket of cocoa core. So that's three parts cocoa core. And then I'll do about two parts compost. This is a mushroom compost that I'm using. And because it was used to grow mushrooms, it can be a bit depleted. So I'm also gonna add in some additional amendments, or you can just go with an all purpose fertilizer like my JP Secret stuff. That's a great option that I mix into the top of my soil when I'm about to plant. So we did three parts cocoa core, two parts of compost. This stuff is super dense. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more vermiculite and perlite. I like adding both of them because the compost is dense. It holds on to water really well. It retains moisture great. The cocoa core also retains a lot of moisture. So by adding in some perlite, that's gonna lighten it up and it's gonna improve the drainage and it's gonna make it more areas for the roots to have oxygen to be able to breathe and kind of easily move through the soil. While the vermiculite is gonna help with water retention, it's gonna like lighten up the mix a little bit too. And it just combined, getting both of them kind of gives me the best of both worlds. So I add a little bit more vermiculite and a little bit more perlite. When it comes down to it, it's basically half a bucket of perlite, half a bucket of vermiculite to equal one full bucket. So I switch the ratio, I do a lot less of the vermiculite and the perlite, but it seems to make a fantastic mix for me. Let's start getting this all mixed up, and then we'll go into more detail about some additional additives as we move along. We've got Tuck watching out for us. If you love seeing the little boss in the videos, he's always working hard. Spam some hearts down low. He's trying to stay warm in his little sweater here. Me and Tuck also wanted to mention to check out some of the merch and some of our fantastic gardening products, like a lot of the stuff I'm using in this video and raised beds and stuff. Check it out at teamgrow.us. Let's get mixing. 
This is the soil that I've used for years in my raised beds and it's grown some amazing food for me. And you'll notice I like using the five gallon buckets because this helps me with the ratios. It kind of helps me get an idea of how much of each I'm adding. So it's almost like, you know, cooking, you have like your measuring containers. My measuring containers are the five gallon buckets. And I love using the tarp because I can just fold it over like this. It makes the mixing process a lot easier. What I find to work the best though, is actually getting in here, getting my hands dirty. Start really just bringing it all together and I'll add in some amendments and stuff. But if you wanted, this could, this would be just a fantastic mix just as I'm showing it like this. But because I use mushroom compost, there's just not that much nutrition in here. So we're definitely gonna have to add some nutrition. As you can see, that's a real nice mix. We've got compost in there. We've got the cocoa core. We've got the vermiculite for water retention. We've got the perlite for drainage and better aeration. That right there is a beautiful mix. Just like that works perfect for your raised beds, but also for growing in containers and pots. Let me show you how I would use a fertilizer if I didn't add any additional amendments and just wanted to plant out in the mix in this basic form how I have it now. Here's a raised bed right here with the same exact mix that I just showed you without additional additives. So if I was going to plant something like a lettuce right here, what I would do is I would find my square foot. I would take some of my fertilizer And then I would just sprinkle some fertilizer in the top. I like to wait to add to the fertilizer until I'm planting around that time, instead of adding it when I'm first mixing it. I like to mix the fertilizer into the top few inches. This way, as it rains and stuff, it will, uh, you know, and it gets watered, it will go down and deeper into the soil. I don't wanna mix the fertilizer all the way at the bottom. So we'll just add a little fertilizer like that, mix it in, make my hole. I'll pop my lettuce out. You can see the roots look really nice. Then I'll take some mycorrhizal fungi and just inoculate it. And then we'll just drop it in like that. And then water it in. So this is the process that I've used for years and I've had fantastic results with it. This year, I wanna try to take things to the next level. So we're gonna add some additional amendments into the original soil that I just showed you. The first additional amendment we're gonna add is worm castings. So we're just gonna take a bunch of these worm castings and just add them to this mix. This is really gonna help. If you wanna raise your own worms too, you can get some of your own worm castings, but if you don't wanna do that, you can just get these worm castings, add them in like this. Tuck's watching out for me, right boy? Good boy, Tuck. That looks pretty good like that. Next, let's add in some kelp meal. So I'm gonna add some of this. I'm not gonna go too crazy. Tuck's not in the way of the wind, so he won't get anything on him. Next, we'll add in some seaweed extract. This is gonna be really potent, so we don't wanna to add too much of this. Oops. And just follow the instructions on the bag for how much you should be adding. Next, we'll add some biochar. This is so incredibly light. So at this point, we're at more of like a advanced formula to make my soil mix. I'm not gonna add in any azomite because the fertilizer I use, my JP Secret stuff, that has azomite in it. So let's get all this mixed up. And again, these things that I just showed you at the end, these are just to help improve the soil even more. But if you're using an all-purpose fertilizer, that basic mix that I showed you will work fine. And I have had amazing results using this both in my raised beds and in my pots. And if you want for your potting mix, you could add a little bit more perlite if you want to. 
just to make it just drain a little better. But this mix that I've used is, uh, this is the only mix I'm ever gonna probably use again because it works so fantastic. There it is, your finished advanced soil. This stuff is way better than anything you can buy at the store. It's going to be cheaper if you can get this stuff in bulk. And uh, believe me, try out this mix. You'll be amazed at how fantastic everything grows. And if you haven't grown, used Cocoa Core before, you gotta try growing with it. It is so much better than peat moss in my opinion. It's also more environmentally friendly. Look at the texture, look at the soil structure. This is exactly what our plants want to grow in. It's light, so the roots can move through it, but it can retain, it can retain moisture really well. It'll drain well. We added some nutrition and uh, your plants will be so happy that you planted them in this amazing stuff. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck had a blast out here. He's still keeping watch of us as we're working. Looking cute like he always does, right boy? So this could be a little bit of a investment initially, but I really suggest you try to make your own soil and you go with my, my ratios and my ingredients. I think it's the best, well, it's worked the best for me. So originally I shared with you the Mel's mix. That's the most basic overarching general mix of the one third of peat moss or cocoa core one third vermiculite, one third compost. I just found that that was too much vermiculite for me. So I adjusted it and this is the mix that works best for me. My ratio is more of like a three, two, one. So it's three parts cocoa, cocoa core, two parts compost, and one part a blend of perlite and vermiculite. You can see how gorgeous the soil comes out. I mean, look at it, the texture, everything. And it's gonna be relatively, I mean, it's not gonna be cheap to get started. It'll be cheaper than buying your own bagged soil but making good soil the first time will make a massive difference in your garden. And once you get your soil going like this, it's only just a little bit of upkeep as the years progress. This is soil that I built a few years ago. Only thing we need to do is just maybe add a little bit of compost in here as the years go on and then add some fertilizer, but we don't have to keep remaking the same soil every year. So it's a little bit of an investment upfront, but it's definitely worth it in the end. So me and Tuck had a blast out here. We hope you guys got some value out of the video and we hope that you enjoyed it. We wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Mandy Smash. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. If you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends and don't forget to check out teamgrow.us to grab some of the best quality gardening products. Tuck and James, we'll be back to you again real soon. We out.